Jojalapa, Namaskar, good morning and good evening. I'd like to welcome you all in the platform of EWU. This is Pramesh, your host. And I would like to, yes, welcome our resource person, Daya Sakya, who is a linguist, and we, have, we are really glad to have him here in our EWU, that uh, he has been helping us to initiate this Nepal Vasa language class. So let me welcome Mr. Daya Sakya. Mr. Sakya. Jodhulopa, namaste. Good evening, good morning for everybody who is listening to me. So this is the second episode that we have been trying to you know, put together. So today is uh, July 22nd. So I have put together for today's session that we will, I will be focusing on some of the, uh, the comments I heard from the first session that I will address some of those comments and then hopefully uh, you'll be able to understand the comments what I got from you and then also I'm responding to all those comments. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, my speech is kind of like a very fast moving so probably some of you have did not understand what I was telling at the time so today I will be focusing on a little bit you know slow motion. So hopefully everybody can catch up as uh, as easy as possible for you. So definitely some people also mentioned that this has to be some kind of like a classroom uh, setting of just like a, there's a blackboard or whiteboard or those kind of setting probably in a, necessary. So since I have been teaching language for many years and then my way I teach is like a something like a, with the students and also in the teacher in front of you know in front of uh, all. So that's why the way I did it, like uh, I'm thinking about the same way because all the students are not visible in my eyes, but you are somewhere around the world. But only I can see is promise is right there. So I promise as my student. So I've been, you know, uh, doing like this for today. So um, the other thing, is, um, some of the sentences what I read from my ex uh, book and also uh, for example. So those example uh, sentences are not clear enough for them. So today. I will read as slow as possible so that you can get the get the sense of and then so probably you will be able to you know, write it down in your notebook or somewhere you are you can write it down very slowly because writing the Nepal Vasa is not as easy as as you are you know the language so definitely there are some you know diacritics uh, diacritic symbols those needs to be you know familiarized so that you will be able to do that so for this time so probably you do not need to write it down everything. I would like you to just focus on listening and then what I have been telling you. So because probably without book with in front of you, so the writing may not be easy for you to because it has to be very uh, sound uh, length, you know, vowel length, you know, uh, needs to be considered. So how to write and how to you know pronounce. So if you start writing, so you may not be able to focus on writing and also on listening to me. So that's why. Uh, as you mentioned that uh, writing may not be the necessary for this moment, but I will have another session probably at the end of the maybe last two sessions will be more focused on how to read and write most of the Nepal Vasa, you know, uh, language and also the sentence and also the paragraph. So that way in that time you will be able to read and write most of the stuff. So for now, please focus on only on listening. So, um, Pramesh, do you have any other comments you got from your uh, from your email or anything? Those are the two things I have in my in my mind right now. Yeah, absolutely right. You are correct. So, thank you, audiences. That yes, you have been really kind to giving us the feedback. Actually, the, we have a mixed kind of feedback. There are a lot of people who really yes, like the way that yes, you have gone. That you have uh, you have just you have given the yes. Uh, the historical background and you have covered so many areas so that it is very easier for people yes who can go un and understand but there are some of the people who has a concern that yes it, it should be more like a practical session not the theoretical theoretical one that you already have covered on that so i hope that yes uh, so we have we are trying our best yes uh, to uh, accommodate all of our audiences uh, who has a who has given their feedback. So please audiences, give us a, a lot of feedbacks. For the feedbacks, yes, uh, you can uh, inbox us in the Facebook or you can just send the email at nepalbhasa.ew at gmail.com. 
So I will just, yes, uh, I will just pass the floor to you, Mr. Sakya. Uh, thank you, Promesi. So uh, hopefully from now on, uh, a lot of people will follow uh, as easy as possible. So the topic what I have, you know, put together for today's you know, session is to focus on how to um, build a world. So last time we discussed about the bowel system, the bowel has to be long and short and also nasalized. So those words, those sounds are put together with a consonant. And so if you have a one consonant and then one vowel, and that becomes a word in our language. So which is something very, very different in other languages. If you know the Nepali words, just like a timi. So timi has a two word, two sounds. So T and then me. But whereas in Nepal, Vasa, there's a one sound and then one word. For example, I have listed some of the words, just like, uh, for example, I have a uh, ma, ma means mother, ba, ba means father, and also dai, dai has uh, two vowels, d, a, i, a, i is also considered as a uh, two vowels in one place, so that is considered as a diphthong in English or linguistic uh, uh, features, but still considered as a uh, one sound, dai. So ma, ba, dai, bhai, za, za is uh, like a rice to eat, ke, or like a, a, you know, the lentil. So che, cho, so, la, ma, ka, pe, la, ja, koi, and koi. So these words I just uh, pronounced, these are all with only one vowel. Even though there are two vowels, they are still considered one word. So this is the features that you will be able to build up. When you look at into the dictionary, these words are ex you know, written in an extended way. For example, if I call cha, the jha by itself is a word in one sound, but one word, but it is also Probably you will be find the same word in different language in a different con uh, extension like a jhal. So that will be the another you know feature you can look at into the Nepal Vasa language feature. So one sound, one word, and then one meaning. So this kind of feature is very very unique in Nepal Vasa, and then it is not very difficult for you to uh, look at the word in a dictionary and then pronounce as much as possible you can. But the difference I mentioned in the last time that there has to be a long vowel and short vowel. If the long vowel is not pronounced long, if the short vowel is not pronounced short, then there will be a meaning difference. So these features are very important to understand. So for that, you may need to practice uh, more than one time or maybe several times to practice so that uh, you'll be able to pronounce the word as needed. So when I say the one sound, one um, one sound, one word, there are not only the Nepal was a word, so only it's the one sound, one word, and there is called the monosyllabic word. The monosyllabic words mean every single word has a one vowel only. If there's a two vowel come together, still considered as a one, uh, one sound. So monolingual sounds are called the one uh, word in Nepal Vasa. Not only in a one sound or one vowel or monolingual, mono uh, syllabic words, but there are some other words which are the two vowels. For example, I would like to read some of the words like a tuti, uh, laka. So tuti, laka, tata, kaka, kapa, posa, jasa, maka, janga, popu, mika, mutu. Um, so these are two vowel words. So they are called the bisyllabic. So two vowels. Every word has two vowels. So this is another feature that not only just the one vowel words, there are two vowel words are also possible in uh, in Nepal Vasa. So all these words, what I just said, they are all noun words. So for example, ma is a noun, laka is a noun, tota is a noun, but it has a different uh, category of noun. So ma as a, a kinship term, laka as an object, tota as a kinship term, pasa as a uh, different uh, part, of, uh, part of the business, jasa as a part of the business. So there are so many categories of what noun words are built up 
based on the sound system of one vowel or two vowels. And every single vowel by itself can also be a war, as I mentioned in the last episode. So if you look at the last episode, uh, you'll be able to find, a, for example, E. E as a one sound, one vowel, and that means the time. A ah, as a one sound, one vowel, and that means right now. So same way, every single vowel has a meaning of, you know, if you pronounce in a correct way. Definitely not only just the two vowels, there are also some words which has a three vowels. For example, uh, mutu and si. So mutushi means lips. So the lips in our language called mutushi. And then in terms of mutushi, it's not something M-U-T-U-S-I, but it has to be M-H-U. I mentioned in the last episode that the M sound also can be nasalized. M sound can also be lengthy, like for example, with the aspiration. So N-H, M-H, L-H, these are the special features in Nepal Vasa. So these features are not available in other languages, most probably that you may not have heard about it. That's why when the other speaker of Nepal, other speaker of other languages are able to try to uh, speak the Nepal Vasa, these sounds are not very native to them. So that's why it doesn't so very unique to them. So that's why they cannot pronounce properly. Some, similarly, the Nepal Vasa speakers can pronounce very easily. For example, for me is ma and ma. So if the ma is make it length longer, ma, so ma is a gum. Ma is a lid. So those kind of as a ma and ma, those sounds are very, very clear when I pronounce it. So when you listen, it's probably it may not be clear enough for you. But once you practice, you will be able to do that. For example, ma by itself is a body or ma. If the ma is longer, then it's a ma. So that long one becomes the lid in the metal, material lid, like a, uh, like a metal. So these are the features you can find. I have also listed two words. One is called tasbir. You can say the tasbir very easily because the tasbir is very common word, not only in Nepal Vasa and also in another. But there is a native word for tasbir is kipa, but kipa is commonly not used. But whereas in the Nepal, Nepal people, they use the word tasbir. So in the word tasbir, there are the R ending. R is a consonant ending. Similarly, we also have the word kalam. So kalam is in a native word, maybe it's a different word like a chosa, but, net, but commonly use the word tasbir and kalam. They are borrowed word from different language, but we still digest, we still use in Nepal Vasa to use these two words, tasbir as a, uh, as a picture and kalam as a pen. So in both of them, there are a consonant ending. So this way, one sound, one vowel is a one category. Another is two vowels is another category. There are three vowels is another category. So monosyllabic, disyllabic, and the multisyllabic. These words are also available in Nepal Vasa. So when you look at the dictionary, you do need a dictionary to learn Nepal Vasa. When you look at the dictionary, these words are commonly used in, you can find these words. But in the feature of Nepal Vasa, these words are not available by itself when you use in a sentence. So that I will come up with in a third session. So how it changes these words when you change when you use in a sentence. So this will be another task for the next um, next episode. So moving to all the you know words, how we form, how we uh, generate, so how we put together in a sentences. So now I'm focusing on pronouns. The pronouns words are also very simple uh, with the one vowel. For example, I have a cha means you. Chi is also means you in an honorific way. Ji is also uh, is a word for I. And then wo is also W-O. Wo is for he or she. Now the difference between Male and female in Nepal Vasa is not clear in the pronoun, like in other languages. So in English, you have a he for the male and then she for female. But whereas in Nepal Vasa, we do not differentiate in a third person pronoun because this is why when somebody is talking about a female, sometimes, you know, when the native speaker of Nepal language, when they speak English, sometimes they mixed up talking about female, but saying he, he all the time. So you may want to 
pay attention when somebody is talking like that. And that happens because in Newa language, there is no difference between he and she. It is simply one which is called a wa. So, so if the noun words can be, you know, like um, put together for the plural sense, the plural sense can be, you know, added by two different ways. One is adding with the uh, ta, and then one is adding with a pin. So P is specifically focused on only Kathmandu, uh, Kathmandu dialect because in other dialect the P is not used. For example, if I say ma, ma is a mount word for mother. So the, if the mothers came, then you have to say ma P. If the fathers came, you get the ba P. So if you say kaka, kaka as an uncle. So if you I want to make a plural of kaka, so kaka P. So those are the P is used specifically only for the kinship terms. If the kinship terms and also the, um, they can be used for the other purpose also. Uh, so the other one, the plural marker in Nepal Vasa is adding a ta. For example, uh, if you say, if I say laka, I, I gave the word this laka earlier. So laka, is this a P or something else? So laka is a word for shoes. So there are many, many shoes. So how do you call this? Lakanta or Lakampi? So a lot of people confuse, a lot of people make an error these days whether the P is used or Ta is used. So if I call the word, another one is an uh, animal, like a Kicha. Kicha is an animal. But the Ma, Ba, and Bhai, and Tata, these are also like a kinship term. But the Kicha used with the Ta, but the Ma, Ba as a kinship term we use as a P. So ma pi, ba pi, but it cannot be kicha pi. So if you call the kicha pi, it definitely you are kind of like a, you know, borrowing the pi as a other, you know, from other language. So the kicha has to be ta, kicha ta wola. So not like a kicha pi wola or sa wola. Sa as a noun for a cow. So the cow, cows, you can use the word cows and then sa ta wola. So Ta and then P are the two different suffix you added with the noun, so that becomes plural. So these are the features you can find to making a, you know, making a plural forms. Uh, similarly, if you are using the numbers like a one, two, three, four, five, so counting the, these numbers with the, uh, using the noun. For example, uh, how many shoes are there? Ono, laka, to, guli, do. So in this case, in this case, what happens, you have to use, so uh, the laka as a war, but it is not considered as a one shoe, but the laka is always considered as a pair, because one shoe does not exist in our language. It has to be a pair. So laka cha zu. So cha is a one and zu is a pair. So why we need to add zu? That I will focus on the third session. And actually, actually, yeah, third session. The next session we will discuss about. These are all the very, very specific features for Newa language. So definitely, you know, any kind of counting the noun words has to be categorized into either like a, a nominate, a name, a animate or inanimate. Inanimate means not living being, but the animate means a living being. So we categorize the noun words into category of the living and also the category of non-living. When you look at into the non-living, there are a whole bunch of, you know, suffixes needs to be added with the number. So just giving you one example, if it's a piece of paper, that would be a chaku. If it is a sheet of paper, that would be a chapa. If it is a bread, that would be a chapa mori. So these kind of categories that I will give you, you know, full discussion about the call is called a classifier. The classifier is a very special feature. Only find not actually not only in Nepal Vasa, there are other languages also available. The classifier, but other languages they classify into different way. But in Nepal Vasa, we classify the words into different category based on the shape, size, and also the animate and inanimate, or the living or non-living. Even the plant itself is a uh, kind of like a living being, but we don't use that like a, with the plants are called just like a, for example, the root plant of uh, rose flower, gulaf, ya, ma, so tama, nima, soma. So ma is considered as a plant. So these kind of categories are also, you know, 
uh, can be discussed in the Parvasa language. Uh, for example, if I say uh, Mika, Mika is considered as a round object, so we call Mika as a ga, Mika chaga, Mika niga, Mika swanga, Mika pyanga. So ga is a round object. So these are the categories you can find attached with the noun object. When you use in a sentence, so definitely these words or these suffixes or the classifier needs to be attached with the, with the noun word. So as I said earlier, so the some of the one uh, one word one sound words like a ma ba dai bhai za ke che cha so la ma khon phe uh, la ja and kai and then kai all these words get the plural marker either ta either ta not ta is either ta or pi so when it is a clearly kinship terms like a relationship within the father, mother, or sister, whoever is, you know, can come as a related. So they are all used with the P, but in Bhaktapur dialect, they do not use the P, but they use a Poon. So P and then Poon are the two different allomorphs. It's called the morpheme. So morpheme they use for different dialects. So when you talk about someone who is from Bhaktapur area, definitely you will find they are using the word P. Kiza Poon Wala. So these are the pun is kind of added as a plural marker in Nepal Vasa based on the Neva and uh, Bhaktapur dialect. So the other thing um, in pronouning, using the plural word in pronoun, so same way as like a cha becomes chipi, wa becomes ipi, ji becomes jipi, chi becomes chipi, wa becomes upi. So Ipi, jipi, chipi, upi. So these are the plural added uh, third person singular, first person singular, and then third, uh, second person plural. So this kind of a P is added even with the pronoun word also. So this is very common in uh, Nepal Vasa uh, ne Nepal Vasa language. Okay, promise you, I'm just focusing on only the noun words, how to build up the noun words and how to add with the, you know, you build up the pronoun and also with the plural marker. So this is very shortly I have discussed. So if you look at the word, uh, some of the pages I have in my book. So uh, for example, I have some words given in page 13. If you look at the word, uh, page 13 from your uh, text, I have some words given here, like a kapa, khamu. Are you following, Promesi? Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, yes, kapa, khamu, gazu, ka, nga, chakuncha, chala, jani, janga, yon, taraju, thalabala, daraz, dha, naegu, Okay, so Nayagu is a verb. So we'll discuss the verb at the fifth session of this episode. Ne, pa, pakan, bow, bow, mata, me, yella, rani, lani. There's a, it has an error here. It's not the lentil, it's not the rani. So it's a lani is the queen. La, wasa, sala, he. So these are the words we definitely find in dictionary. But when you change, use these words in a sentence, so that becomes a little bit changed. The change is like, a, for example, if you know any word, any noun word, if you put a suffix like a in the something, in the noun or in the something, so then the the noun form changes into different. So this is kind of like to be complicated, complicated and also a little bit um, confusing for the learner speak with. So unless I give you some examples or some example of sentences, so it will not be clear enough. So that I'm going to give you a one sentence. For example, I have a So there's a conversation in page nine Tho Okay, Tho Chu. Second one, the answer is Tho Santra Shikha. Chaga ya Guli. So Chaga is one, one round object Guli. 
छटका या छग जित न्याग बिया दिश कया दिश हस वेन यू से हस दे इज अ लंग भावल इज अ ह हस वो छु वोला बरा का सो किलो या गुली ले झितका का झितका जग निवू किलो बिया दिश हस आम छुले थोला गोय का छकू या गुली छतका या निकू पेकू बिया दिश हस सो दिस इज अ वेरी सीम्पल कमन कमन कन्वर्सेशन बिटविन टू पीपल वन इज आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन एंड देन अदर वन इज कैन अफ एंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन बट इट हेज अ डिफ्रेंट डिफ्रेंट थोन सो फर एक्जापल एस ए जित न्याग बिया दिश सो जित न्याग बिया एंड दिश जित हेज अ कमा नट कमा इज अ कोलन इज गिवन देयर न्याग हेज अ कम और कोलन इज गिवन देयर सो वेन यू से जित So if the ta is not pronounced long enough, then that jita has no meaning in Nepal Bhasa. So that's why the people who are learning Nepal Bhasa as a second language and they have a little bit it is difficult to understand the making a long vowel and then short vowel. So these are the kind of like you need to be focused on very, uh, very clearly, clearly. Also, nyaga. So on nyaga, it cannot be nyaga just nyaga. It has to be nyaga. So that long vowel of ga, it if you put into in you know, a oblique form, it becomes nya ga la. So nya ga la is the old form. Now in a modern time, that the nya ga la is dropped and then ga remain over there. So that's why it has to be pronounced in a long way. Long vowel is nya ga. Same way, I have uh, another example. I can get it from the different uh, context. Mm -hmm. So uh, the word I gave you earlier is a jha. So jha. When you look at the dictionary, you will find the word jha with a long vowel a. But when you say in the window, the jha is a window. In the window, we don't say jha something. We have to say jha loy. Now where this loy come from? is the clue to remember that the actual word in nepal vasa has an embedded meaning is given there embedded um, feature is hiding behind but it does not appear in the actual nominative word actually in a dictionary word so when you put into sentence when you put into a grammatical feature that cha becomes chale mokka is a fire pot The lot of people during the winter time they carry at their hand. It's called maka. So maka, if it is in the makal, that becomes makale. So where this lay come from? So these are the features that I will focus on the another sessions that how it comes to you know. It's called the oblique case mark. All the case mark needs to be discussed right after when you are able to know the noun words. So I will discuss about the case mark. So how the case mark comes together. especially in uh especially in nepal bhasha so these case marks are very very important to know every single language we have a case mark so same way this is going to be you know a uh, feature of some nepal bhasha words now i would like to uh, move on to uh, uh, adjectives so the adjectives in nepal bhasha so when you look at the dictionary you will find masu to you Tadi, cidi, tapu, cipu, tapa, cipa. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I have a question that you have been saying about the uh, dictionary, right? Do you have yes. any recommendation dictionary that yes you are referring to, so that will be easier for our audience to grasp it. Yeah, I I have the dictionary used all the time. There are many many dictionaries available, but the uh, one with the English and Nepal Bhasha dictionary is written by uh, Kamal Ratna Tuladar. So I recommend the Nepal Bhasha sub the course Kamal Ratna Tuladar dictionary is very info uh, uh, very suitable for the learners. So I would like to next time when I come to third session, so I will bring that book in front of you to show you how it looks like. The Kamal Ratna Tulaadar's dictionary is very essential. It has the Devanagari and also in an English pronunciation of the Nepali words. 
So those are very important for you. Maybe, maybe you can look at into uh, um, um, Amazon.com. So probably it has been, it will be listed or something. So Nepal Vasa Sapta Course, Nepal Vasa Dictionary, uh, written by Kamal Ratna Tulata. So there are also several other dictionaries, uh, dictionary that I will bring over to show you in a Skype uh, in our conversation. So next time. So the adjectives, what we are talking about. So in actually in Nepal Vasa, the adjectives are not as as clear as in other language. For example, red, white, blue, these are all fine in a dictionary in a very easy way, but the uh, Nepalvasa adjectives are derived from the verb. So there is no clear cut independent adjectives in Nepalvasa, but we can make into Nepalvasa adjectives. So adding the suffix together. For example, I have just Yugo uh, called Tofu, Chipu, Todi and Chidi. So to is for big and then Chi is for small, unit by small. So when I say to he, he is a kind of like a, a suffix added to to. To fu is a fu is suffix added to to. Chi fu is a fu is suffix added to chi. So fu represents like a thin long object. He is like a solid object. So to he, chi he. So and then to pa chi pa. So this is a feature that you can find in Nepal Vasa dictionary, Nepal Vasa language that the adjectives are built up together not by single word as in English, uh, small, large, big, red, white, independent words are not available in Nepal Vasa, but it built up by adding something to, uh, to the base word and that the base word by itself doesn't come together in a sentence, but it has to be added with a uh, uh, suffix. That suffix is called a uh, uh, classifier. And then the suffix is classifier, and then you have to have a gu. Gu is also another suffix. Ta fu gu, chi pu gu, ma su gu, tu yu gu, ha ku gu. So that these are the ways that you build up the adjectives for describing the noun. So this is a very typical, uh, typical um, uh, feature in Nepal Vasa. So noun words also carry the gender difference. So as I mentioned earlier, the pronouns, we do not have a difference between the he and she in pronouncing the gender. So same way if the words, for example, I have a word kita. So kita is a neutral gender. So when I say neutral gender, I mean the kita not, never have a gender, that's not true. So in order to specify whether a kita or a dog is a male or female, that we added something like a misa. So kita by itself is a no gender, but when we added a misa along with the kita, the kita, misa ma kita, misa ma kita, misa ma kita. So these are the pieces that you added before the noun kita to specify whether the gender is described. For example, if you see a tiger, that you just cannot differentiate the tiger is like a male or female. So misa ma dung. Misa ma dung. So misa is a word for female, and then misa is a word for male. So, but misa can also be a girl. Misa can also be a woman. So this way, men, girl or female or woman. So these are common words used to identify the male and the, the gender of the gender of the noun. So same way, there are some words which has gender specific already described. For example. Uh, Misamo Mata. So Misamo Mata is like a, the, the baby is not known. So unless you specify like a Misama or Misama. But for example, if you look at into a bird like a chicken, so chicken as a hen or rooster, and the rooster is Gonga itself, the gender is specified. So some words are gender specified and some words are not gender specified. If the words are not gender specified, then you have to specify by adding the word misa or misa. So this is the special feature. For example, sa or the cows, gender specifically already given is a male, female, and sa and then don. So don is another, you know, um, the male, male, male cow. So I would like to say male cow or the bull. So this way, some commonly used words are in a dictionary, but they are gender specifically already specified. 
But if the gender is not specified, so we can make it the gender specification by adding the word, adding the uh, prefixes like a misa and then misa. I think uh, this is what I have right now. So um, in a very uh, simple way, we can uh, move on this kind of uh, language uh, lesson by giving you the lecture. But I would like to also emphasize on that just listening to my lecture, so it will not be helpful for you. You need to have your interest. You need to have your focus. You need to have your dictionary with you. You need to have your writing something so that whenever you read something or whenever you hear something, so please write it down. And then I'm using this book. It's like a guideline for you so that this book will be available in the market. So if you are in Kathmandu, so definitely this book is available through the, uh, there's a buzzer book depot in Tamil. And also I will be making it available in US in the next few weeks so that it's on the way to coming to uh, US. So please send us your orders and we can make the book available for you so that you will be able to follow up in a very simple way. Some of the uh, you know examples given in this book is uh, very, very uh, you know specific level use words, specifically used for expression. So these are the basic terms today. So uh, I think I'm going to conclude for today and then I hope you understand all this. So hopefully the more we listen, the more we talk about it, it will be more clearer and clearer for you. So, okay, Promise I think this is much for you today. I think it will be uh, beneficial for all our listeners and viewers. So hopefully, I don't know how I did it today. So as a listener for you, so let me know some comments from your side if you have anything to comment. Thank you, Mr. Sakya. Uh, so to my audiences, so while he was telling that about his book, which is Neva Bhai. So actually, yes, I have received a really a great compliments and a really great thing about this book from the Sikkim. So especially from the Sikkim area, uh, the audiences, they have reacted really good that they were saying that, yes, this is a Neva Bhai written by our own uh, Daya Sakya. So, uh, so then I was just doing research and I just saw that it is available in imagine.com also. So it's uh, $9 that yes, it has. And uh, if you order now, possibly as yes, you can get it within a week, time period. So uh, if, you would, uh, if you are interested, that you can also check it on the imagine.com. And it's called the Newa Hai. Spell like Newa Hai Lordner. So how it has put it here is Neva Bhai. So it's uh, spelled like N-E-W-A-H, then Bhai. This is B-H-A-Y-E. So if you are interested, you can check on there. And it's uh, mentioned as it's a $9 there. So this may be the reference. And as uh, Mr. Sakya has emphasized on the dictionary, so you can also check some of the dictionaries. So this way that yes you will have some of the resources available with, with you and we will be trying our best to yes to do more in the practical way as you have given us the, some of the feedbacks so so we are almost at the end of the hour so I really thank uh, Mr. Sakya for his uh, time and uh, the resources that yes uh, he has put uh, so that yes we can learn uh, some of the Newa language. So audiences, please, yes, uh, give us a feedback. Uh, once again, it will be mentioned in the, uh, my Facebook page also. That would be nepalbhasa.ewu at gmail.com. So we will be, yes, uh, I really appreciate if you guys can just shut down some of the feedbacks, if it's, uh, and how, yes, you would like to, yes, listen in the next class. Hopefully, yes, uh, it would be in the next two weeks, right, Mr. Sakya, that the next yes, third, yes, yes, third yes. class would be, yes. So we are just trying to bring you this stuff in every two weeks. So please, uh, please, please, please uh, send us a feedback and we'll try our best to, uh, uh, to get uh, to, I mean, uh, those feedbacks would be the guidance for us to carry on uh, so that it would be easier for everybody to understand and starting uh, some of the words and some of the conversation by the end of this uh, uh, this episodes. So thank you so much again, Mr. Sakya.
Okay, thank you. So next time will be on August fifth. So let's let's meet on August uh, August fifth. Uh, I will bring more uh, more detailed topics on different subject. So after that, every episode will be helpful for you to understand. But after just listening for one or two, so it will not be easy to understand the all features. But if you complete all six episodes, I will definitely that you will have a lots of you know knowledge on Nepal Bhasa. But it will not be fluent. But you still understand. But you can be able able to build up your own sentences by yourself without. Being fluency without having a fluency, but definitely you'll be able to understand how it works. And then the fluency is another part how much you practice. So until then, so I would like to say bye to you. And then hopefully you, I enjoy my you know, uh, I don't like I will enjoy my talks. I hope you enjoy my talks. So definitely we will move on similar similar way. So please tell the, all your interested people to join and listen to this uh, lecture so that they will be benefited. From your message given to them. Thank you again. See you next time. Bye bye. Zuzulopa. Thank you, Mr. Sakya. Saying so, audience, please, please, please give us a feedback and uh, hope that yes, it will be beneficial for all, everybody. Of I mean, all of us, so that uh, we can just uh, we can do something on this new language. So saying so, it's a time to say the goodbye. So, how we are to buy? Bye. Bye bye.